If you're like me, you like to know what content you can use without worrying about copyright infringement and getting a takedown notice from AdRev or Content ID. So let's talk about public domain music, what it is, and how we can use it. First, we need to understand what public domain actually is. And basically, it's something that belongs to everyone. Let's break down that phrase. Public means open to all people, and domain is an ownership of space or things. So all people own what is in the public domain. Think about a sidewalk. Any sidewalk on any public street in the US. That sidewalk belongs to everyone, and so it is in the public domain. So public domain music is music that belongs to everyone. But how does a piece of music or audio recording get to be in the public domain? There are a few ways, actually. The first is that the copyright for the song expires. Copyright law has changed a bunch since the first Copyright Act was passed in the US in 1790, but now it takes at least 70 years for the copyright to expire on a piece of music. As of this video's publish date, Anything recorded before 1923 is in the public domain. Another way a piece of music becomes public domain is the author releases it to the public. This is done by the author simply creating a statement that they will release all rights to their work. Then the music can be used by anyone and the original composer of that music has no control over how other people can use the music. Finally, a piece of music or audio recording can be public domain if it was created for a government project. The US government is an extremely large publisher of content, and as long as the content was created by government officials or employees as a part of their official duties, they are, by law, non-copyrightable. This includes audio files, but you have to be careful when trying to find music on government sites. A lot of music in the Library of Congress collections are recordings of artists who are not government employees, so many of these works may still be under copyright of the composer. So just keep that in mind in your search for public domain music. And that actually brings me to my next point about using caution when searching for public domain music in general. If a piece of music is in the public domain, it's only the original version that's available to use. If the music is used in another work, that work might be copyrighted. For example, if a DJ uses a piece of public domain music in a remix, that remix can be copyrighted because the original public domain work has been altered and made enough different to be a new original work. But that original public domain music is still available for you to use. This goes for new arrangements of old pieces of music as well. Christmas music is a good example. Silent Night is a very old Christmas song and any rights on the song have long since expired so it's in the public domain. But when contemporary artists record their own version of the song on holiday albums, they can copyright the new arrangement of it. So you're left with the option of recording your own version or searching for public domain versions of the audio recording. For more information on public domain music, check out the links in the video description. And now that you know some of the basics of using public domain music in your content, I wish you luck and I hope you find some great pieces of music for your videos and podcasts. Thanks for watching.